Well, we all know that placement is everything when it comes to embroidery, and one of the most difficult things to get aligned is that perfect lettering across the back arc of a hat. So let's dive into that. I'm going to give you a few simple steps to follow so that you can set up a template and make sure that every time you put a name on the back of a hat, it's going to line up just perfectly. <laughs> Now the first thing to consider is there is literally dozens of different cap manufacturers and within all those manufacturers there can be hundreds of different styles. And that means that the caps will have slightly different backs as far as how they've been pieced together. You have to remember that for every single style there's a set of dies for the you know panels, for the peak, for the crowns, for all of the pieces that are put around and then they are constructed and you're given a finished hat. So you also can have different types of backings. You can have snaps or Velcro or you can have finish hats and all of those have to be considered because that means there's going to be no one set rule for placement on every single cap style. Now I also do like to hoop my caps within a flat surface. I don't necessarily like to hoop the backs on the cap frame which is a curved surface but I will choose a smaller hoop so if I'm choosing this as a standard size for doing a small name or here I have a round hoop and I will generally hoop this item and I'll make sure that it is straight on the X and the Y and I'll make sure that my eyelets maybe as a guideline within the hat will give me consistency as I hoop this over and over again and I will probably have a hooping station or hooping aid set up so that I know that I'll always get the same results when I'm hooping. That way I don't have to necessarily have to worry about the, the actual arc being tilted one way or another. Now for doing this the first time it's important that you hoop it correctly once and then we're going to take a picture of this with our camera on our phone but I want to make sure that I'm getting a very very straight picture that is dead on to the image so that I can bring this up in my software and make sure that it's straight and then I'm going to set my curve or my you know baseline for this and I'll only have to do it once what I'm going to do is make sure that this is going to be set up for this exact manufacturer for this exact style and then I'll name it as a master file and then all I have to do is swap out the names now I've taken a picture with my camera and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it into the software and this can be done in any software program as far as laying out this arc so it doesn't necessarily have to be the software that you see here but the principles will basically be the same. I'm going to bring in the artwork, I'll bring in the picture of the cap that I actually took and it's going to bring it in and the first thing I'm going to do is I'll just hit my D key which gets rid of that artwork. I'm going to put a point at zero zero so that I can see where the center of my design is and now when I bring that back in I can see that I'm slightly off I need to rotate just a little bit so I'm going to select that object and I'm going to rotate it ever so little and I'll just rotate that a little bit like that so it's going to skew it sideways and I'll bring it back and that looks almost perfect the only thing I have to do now is maybe come in and let's just bring that over a tiny little bit and that looks pretty good. So now I can see that I am square onto the hat. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I see reality because what I'm seeing on screen now is a big blown up picture of the back of this hat but I want to make sure that it actually is reality as far as the size is concerned. Now I'm going to take my digitize open shape I'm going to choose, it doesn't really matter which tool, I'll just choose a back stitch and I'll put one point right here on my object and then I'll hold the control key down and go all the way to the other side and put another point down and hit enter. And there it created, it's a little hard to see it, but it created a really long stitch. I'll just change that color so you can see it on screen and then I'll get rid of the artwork for a second. So I have a really long single stitch from one side to the other and if I select that, uh, object it actually says that it's like 560 millimeters wide that's that's huge it's gigantic and what I want to do is I want to actually take my hat and I want to measure the space from one side to the other and if I actually do measure it 
I can see that it is not 555 millimeters, but it is 125 millimeters. So I'm going to take that object and I'm going to type in 125, hit enter, and now that is the reality of the size. So when I bring my artwork back in, I can see now that I need to make this artwork much smaller. And what I'll do is I'll probably just kind of position it like this, hit it to zero, zero, and I'll just sort of play with it so that I get it to the actual size that I see. And, and I will be eyeballing this, and it might take me a second to kind of get things lined up perfectly, but I just really want it to you know, line up and look pretty much the exact same size. I'm almost there. Then I'll make it a little bit smaller again, maybe about that. And now if I bring this center center, I can see that that's almost it. Let's just make it a tiny little bit smaller. And this one should be pretty much dead on. I'll bring that back to a zero for full screen. And I can see that that is pretty much dead center. And let's just line this up so that I know that I am dead on the money. And that way I'm pretty much good to go at this point. So now that I've actually given it a more realistic line from one side to the other, now I can come in and I can start to kind of section off how I'm going to develop this piece of artwork. And that really is by using my crosshairs and adding more positioning marks. So if I go to the zero, zero on this now, just so that I'm nice and lined up, that original line that I digitized now, I can get rid of that because that was just to show me where to mark it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this arc and I can see that the arc isn't exactly perfect and it never will be because caps are actually constructed by hand and you're going to have, you know, panels that are put in place. People are manually sewing all of these objects and the arcs will always be off a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to look at the best case scenario, which is actually this side of the hat and I'll ignore the worst case scenario, which is this, because I can see my eyelets here on either side. This hat was hooped nice and straight. So I'm going to put a point right about here, and I'm going to bring it up just a tad, and I'll go right there, so I'm kind of along the top part of that arc. And then I'm going to uh, put another line right over here, and this one I'll do the same thing, just bring it up a little tiny bit, but I'll also put a couple of marks on either side. And I know I'd more than likely never go over 80 millimeters from one side to the other. So I'm gonna put on the 40 point here, I'll just put a point down and let's make sure that one's lined up. So that's on minus 40 and then plus 40 over here. So that one's lined up. And that way I can see that my lines are generally in place. And if I look at this right now, I know that it's going to be right from this point to this point as far as arcing on the back of the hat. So what I've done is I have taken this object, let's just get rid of that one and get rid of the display, but I can see that I've drawn in these lines so my arc will generally start here, go over to this side and back down again, and that way I can make sure that it's symmetrical on either side. So now all I have to do, now that I have this guideline or this base in place, is I'm going to create my fixed line template with the lettering within my software, and we'll make sure that we have it set up one time perfectly so that it will sew out properly, and then I can just switch out the names. Now we've resized everything, it's all in place. Again, if I get rid of my artwork, I can see that I have my base points for my arc laid down. Keep in mind that this cap was actually constructed by hand, which means that it's not gonna be perfectly symmetrical and it never will be. There always will be some little discrepancies from one side to the other because they are manually done. But I can use it as a guideline. So I'm gonna very quickly go to my digitizing tools again and I'm going to give myself again a guideline to follow. So I'll digitize open shape and I know that this is my point right here and this is my other point on the other side as far as that arc being symmetrical. But I'm gonna allow for the margin of error because in some lettering and styles, you know, script is different than a block, but the bottom of a Y will always kind of dip down and I got to make sure I allow for that because I don't want it to go down into the seam of an object. So my first point, which is right here, I'm going to actually go up about probably four or five millimeters. I'll just put a point right there. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'll come up four or five millimeters from that seam where that curve is and I'll just put another point, but this time I'm going to right click so that I have a curve and then I'll make sure that I'm symmetrical to the other side 
right over here so that it is going to give me a point right here and it's symmetrical on the other side to where that object is and that is where I will have my last point right there and now I can see that I have a perfect arc as far as that's concerned so there is my arc and that'll be the same arc that I use for all of my lettering and I'll get rid of that afterwards because now I only have to set this up once I'm gonna to go to my lettering I'll choose the lettering I can type in any let any you know name that I want let's just type in Richard and I'm going to uh, see that it's block I can change the font I can change the size of the font generally you want you know 8 to 10 12 millimeters for the back of a hat so it looks nice and clean but I'll generally want it to fit within that you know object unless the person's name is Rumpelstiltskin you should be fine and I'm going to make sure that it's on choose any shape and it's going to be set so that it is a sequence from the center out of the center seam of the hat. So once that's in place, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line or that object that I have, I'm going to click off of it and click back on, I'm going to hit the H key, and I'm going to take these points, because this is my, my sort of any shape lines, and I'm going to put these right on the areas that I've already digitized, so one's going to be right there, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it right over here on the other side. So they're both going out about 40 millimeters from each other, so they are the same now. And now I'm going to come right in the center and I'm going to click on that line, which will put another point down, change it into a curve, and I'll line it up onto that arc. So now I know that that is going to be the same forever. I can now get rid of that first line that I've digitized. If I wanted to, I could get rid of the artwork here, but what I want to make sure that I do is I save this now as a working file. Whatever software program you own, you're going to save this as, you know, ABC as far as the name of the cap manufacturer. Uh, and then you're going to maybe put the style down and put master after that. So you know that this is a master file for that specific brand of hat and the style of the hat as well. So once I save that as a working file, then anytime I want to do hats, I just have to come in here. I can, you know, set that up and I could say, well, I don't want it to be Richard anymore. I want it to be, you know, Jennifer. And I just have to retype it and I will have that name follow that arc perfectly every single time. So it's really as easy as that. All you have to do is set up a template one time only for whatever cap style you have. Make sure the arc is consistent. Save it. And then anytime you do that same type of hat or any type of item, you just have to type in your new lettering and you're ready to go. So just save that master file and you should have perfect placement and the perfect arc every single time. Thanks for watching. If you want to make your embroidery life easier, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos, giveaways, and more. Plus, if you want to try Hatch Embroidery software free for 30 days, or you already own Hatch and you'd like to download a free ESA font for it, click one of the links in the description below to learn more now. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours.